Thomas Telford's famous bridge in the heart of Speyside, and on the edge of the village of Trigelachy, lies the Speyside Cooperage. Welcome to Speyside Cooperage. My name is Douglas Taylor, Joint Manager and Director of the Cooperage, and my family has been running Speyside Cooperage since 1947. Believe it or not, each of these oak casks started life over 100 years ago as a tiny acorn. The making of wooden casks dates back to the earliest civilizations when they were used to store and transport many commodities. And while their use has been superseded by metal or plastics for many modern containers, when it comes to the maturing of wines and spirits, there is nothing to surpass these ancient vessels. The quality and flavour of a good malt whisky depends on its various ingredients. The water, the barley, and of course the distilling process. But it's also very much influenced by the cask in which it matures for at least three years. But the whisky sometimes slumbers for more than 20 years in these wonderfully natural containers. Here at Tregelachy, casks are still made and repaired in the traditional way. We use machinery for some of the processes, but the hand tools used by our coopers and apprentices are still very similar to those used by our distant ancestors. Most of the wood used in Scottish cooperages comes from America. Here, the white oak grows tall and straight and produces a close-grained wood that is ideal for the whisky industry. Once a year, Douglas Taylor visits these forests in Missouri, Tennessee, and Kentucky to select the best timber for our casks. The trunks are cut to the various lengths required for the different cask sizes and then quartered. This quartering is important to preserve the natural strength and the grain of the oak, so that the casks will breathe but not leak. Then the timber is stacked and air dried for 18 months before being shipped across to Craigellan. Casks are often incorrectly referred to as barrels. Barrels are in fact one particular size of cask, 36 gallons. We also make the larger 54 gallon casks, or hogsheads, which we send to Madeira. There, they're treated with Madeira wine for a period of three years. We then bring them back, check them over, and repair them where necessary before sending them on to the distillers. Each new cask is assembled from a number of different components. The staves are first machined down to the correct thickness and jointed so that they will form a watertight fit with the staves on either side. The staves are then fed through the backing and hollowing machine to form the convex outer face and the concave inner face. Each individual stave is shaped in six different ways. A number of staves are then carefully selected for the process of raising up. This assembling of the staves into a cask is a tricky business. It may look easy when done by an expert cooper, but visitors can try it for themselves with one of our demonstration casks. It's not as easy as it looks. One end of the cask is assembled and secured with metal hoops, which were traditionally adjusted and riveted by hand. This was a very noisy process, and new riveting machines have been introduced 
to reduce sound levels. The cask is then steamed for up to an hour to soften the wood sufficiently to enable it to bend. The cask's open end can then be drawn in using a windlass and secured with more metal hoops. The cask is then toasted very slowly over an open fire for around 40 minutes to an external temperature of about 30 degrees centigrade. Firstly to set the new shape of the wood, but also to open the grain on the inside of the cask. This caramelizes the wood and releases wonderful spicy vanilla flavors, which will ultimately influence the flavor of the whiskey or wine, which will mature in the cask. Casks which are going to the whiskey distillers then go through an additional charring process to vary the flavors further. The cask is heated whilst covered with a steel plate to exclude oxygen. After about a minute, when the wood begins to make a crackling sound, the cover is removed, oxygen rushes in, and the cask is allowed to burn for around 20 to 30 seconds, depending on whether the distiller has specified a medium or heavy charring. Now the inside ends of the cask are machined with a groove or crow's bed being cut into which the heads will be fitted. The ends of the cask, or heads as they are correctly called, are made from a number of pieces of oak. The strips of oak are faced and jointed on both sides. At this stage, some parts of old cask heads are recycled. They are then drilled and doweled before being assembled into squares. No glue is needed. The circular laser beam makes the process more efficient since less wood is wasted when the circular head shape is cut. The edge of the head is then shaped ready to fit into the groove or crows in the top of the stave. and sealed with a specially drawn reed called a flag and secured with hoops. The exact size of the hoops is critical for a good tight fit and here the experience of the cooper is essential. The bunghole can now be cut. Followed by a final tightening with a hydraulic press.
The casks should now pass the final test when compressed air and water are injected into the bunghole. As well as making new casks, a large part of our business consists of the repair and renovation of used casks. In America, bourbon casks, by law, are used once only, and so large numbers are shipped over to Scotland and reused for maturing whiskey. These used bourbon casks are inspected and repaired and passed on to the distillers. Structurally, a cask may have a lifespan of 50 to 60 years, but after being used for four or five maturing cycles, the wood loses its flavor-enhancing properties. Decharring the casks gives them a new lease of life. The old carbon is stripped away from the inside of the cask to expose a fresh layer of wood. This is followed by recharring to open up the pores of the new inner surface of the cask to again release the natural flavors of the oak. Finally, at the distillery, whether it be new or reconditioned, the cask is filled with newly distilled whiskey and comes to rest in one of the many warehouses here in Speyside and throughout Scotland. Here the casks will lie until the aged whiskey is bottled, its taste retaining a memory of the cask in which it matured for so many years. But nothing lasts forever, and when a cask finally reaches the end of its whiskey-making life, it can be further recycled. Some are made into furniture or flower tubs, whilst the waste and shavings from the machining goes for smoking fish or for cattle bedding. So try one of our recycled casks for size in our cafe. And the next time you sample a Speyside malt whiskey, you may be able to picture the cask in which it matured, which started life over 100 years ago as an acorn.